Hello everybody, in this video I want to show you how to create a fully customizable wave spawner in Unity. For reference we will look at the wave spawner from the game Bloons Tower Defense. In the end of the video you will have a fully customizable wave spawner. First let's set up our scene. Here I have my enemies which I want to spawn. A normal enemy, a big enemy and a fast enemy. Create an empty game object called for example wave spawner and add a script called wave spawner as well. First, we need to know when to spawn the first wave. Create a float countdown. This number will decrease over time and if it reaches zero, the wave will spawn. Make this serializable so we can set it in the inspector. In the update function, decrease this countdown by time.deltaTime. If the countdown is zero or below, we want to spawn a wave. Create a function called spawn wave and call it right here. But before we write something in here, we have to do something else. We have to create the waves. To do that, go to the bottom of your script and create a new class named wave. To see it in the inspector, write system.serializable at the top. Ok, so here we have a wave. Go into Unity and select your enemies which you want to spawn. Create a new script called enemy and attach it to them. Back in your wave class, create a public array of enemies which are the enemies you want to spawn. Ok, now we can go back into the wave spawner and create an array of waves. Make a public or serializable to set it in the inspector. Now when we go into the inspector, you have an array of waves. When you set the length of the array to for example 3, you will have 3 waves. Each wave has an array of enemies to spawn. In the first wave, I want to spawn 3 normal enemies. Just attach the enemy prefab of the enemy you want to spawn to the array. In the second wave, I want to spawn 5 normal enemies and 2 big enemies. And in the third wave, I want to spawn 3 big enemies, 2 normal enemies and then 4 small enemies. In some versions of Unity, it can happen that you cannot select the first item in the array and when you do, it looks buggy. Just drag the first item under the second one, edit it and drag it back. When I press play, nothing happens. That's because the enemies do exist, but we never actually spawn them. Go back into your scripts into the spawn wave function. To spawn the enemies, we need to go through the whole enemies array and spawn every enemy. But to do that, we need one more thing. Right now, we don't know which wave is currently spawning enemies. So create an integer named current wave index, which will start at zero. Now we create a for loop and loop through the enemy array of the current wave. Instantiate the enemy which is currently selected in the array. Create an empty game object under the wave spawner named spawn point and create a reference to it. Now we can spawn the enemy at that position. Next we want to spawn the next enemy. But we need a way to wait an amount of time so that the enemies don't spawn at the same time. In your wave class create a public float named time to next enemy and set it in the inspector. To actually wait for this amount of time we need to turn the function into a coroutine. At the top, write using systems.collections and turn the void from the spawn wave method to ienumerator. After we've spawned the enemy, we want to wait until the next enemy can spawn. To do that, write yield return new wait for seconds. This might look weird, but it's basically just gonna wait for an amount of time before it continues with the code. We want to wait for the time to next enemy amount of the current wave. But for this code to work, Right, instead of just calling the spawn wave function, start coroutine and then the method. When we hit play, we can see that when the countdown is below zero, enemies are getting spawned. But the problem is that we are not actually resetting the countdown, so the wave spawner just keeps on spawning waves. To fix this, when the countdown reaches zero, we want to set it to the time we want to wait until the next wave. Go into your wave class, create a public float named time to next wave and set it in the inspector. Then when the countdown reaches zero, set the countdown to the time to next wave of the current wave. Ok, there are a lot of problems right now. The enemies do not move, the wave spawner spawns the same wave over and over and the next wave is getting spawned when the last wave is done spawning not when every enemy is dead. Let's fix these problems one by one. First, the enemies do not move. To make them move, go into your enemy script and well, make them move. I won't give a tutorial on this topic. If you want to handle the movement with a script, I recommend watching this video from Burkis. He made a perfect system where you can make an enemy follow a path made with checkpoints. My enemies are just going to move forwards and then die after 5 seconds. The second problem is, the next wave is getting spawned when the last one is finished spawning enemies. But that is not exactly what we want. We want to spawn the next wave when every enemy of the current wave is dead. To implement that, go into your wave class and create a public integer named enemies left. 
This will, as the name says, count the enemies which are currently active and when this number reaches zero, the countdown for the next wave is going to start. We won't set this in the inspector, we want to set it automatically. So you can write hide in inspector so it won't show up in the inspector. Go into your start function and loop through the wave array. In every wave we want to set the enemies left to the length of the enemies array because that is how many enemies are in this wave. We want to decrease this number whenever an enemy dies. To do that go into your enemy script again and create a reference to the wave spawner. You could use something like find object by type in the start function to find the wave spawner but this is not that good when you look at the performance. A better way is to spawn the enemies with the wave spawner as their parent and then just to say get component in parent. In your wave spawner when you spawn the enemies cast them into another enemy and set the parent of that object. I just use the spawn point as the parent, but you can also create a new empty game object, it really doesn't matter. Now when you spawn an enemy, the parent of this enemy will be the spawn point. This cleans up the hierarchy and sets the wave spawner as a parent of the enemies, which is exactly what we want. Now go back to your enemy script and write get component in parent in the start function. Find the point in your script where the enemy reaches the end of the path or where it dies and gets despawned. For me, it's right here. Decrease the enemy's left variable of the current wave by one. Since the current wave index is private, you cannot exit it in the enemy script. You can just make it public or write a getter function which you can access in your enemy script. In your wave spawner, when there are no enemies left in the current wave, we want to switch to the next wave. To do that, just increase the current wave index by one. We are almost done. Create a bool called ready to countdown. In the start function, set it to true because we want to count down when we start the game. If the countdown reaches zero, set it to false. We want to only count down when the current wave ends. So go into this if statement and set ready to count down to true. Finally, only decrease the countdown when ready to count down is true. Well, now you have a working wave spawner. But there's one bug left. Right now I have three waves. But when the third wave is finished, we get an error. That's because we are trying to access the fourth wave right here, but we do not have a fourth wave. To fix this, go into your spawn wave function and say that we only want to loop through the current wave's enemy array when the current wave index is lower than the number of waves we have. Then in your update function, make an if statement at the top. It is very important to write this at the top. We want to check if the current wave index is greater or equals the number of waves we have. If this is the case, we have survived every wave. So let's debug something out so we know that we have survived every wave. Then return to jump out of the function because we do not want to call this code anymore. Okay, now we have a working and fully customizable wave spawner. If you have any questions, just ask them in the comments. And if you found the video helpful or informative, please give me a like and subscribe to the channel to see more tutorials like this. See you in the next video.